Good morning, Quiet Copter 101 here. Before we get started, let's get today's shout out out of the way. Today's shout out goes to the Urban Stealth Camper Van Man. Nice name. <laughs> He was the first to say first in one of my recent videos, and thus he wins a shout out. So, congratulations. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here with another review of another neat quadcopter. This is the ZLRC Beast SG906. What is it? Well, it's a folding drone, as you can see here, but it's also um, what's cool about it is it has relatively good cameras that you can actually select uh, between 1080p or 2K. They, go, they call it 2K slash 4K, but let me explain it. This is available in two models, uh, again, the 1080p version with the 1080p camera on the front, and they also have a 4K camera. Now, when I'm saying 4K, it records photos in 4K, but it records video in 2K, which means uh, the video is recorded in 2048 by 1080p, while the 1080p version records resolution at 1920 by 1080 p So there is two different versions of this. Now, one thing about it, though, this camera does not have an SD card slot. So this video is recorded directly to your phone via Wi-Fi. So keep that in mind, folks. The photos, too, recorded directly to your phone via Wi-Fi. And that Wi-Fi is 5G Wi-Fi, uh, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Um, 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. Now, again, I always stress this. Not everyone has an 802.11 AC capable phone, okay, that can receive 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. So before purchasing this, I strongly recommend that you verify that your phone is indeed capable of receiving 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, or you will be disappointed when you won't say, where's the picture on my phone? Okay, it's because your phone doesn't have that type of Wi-Fi. Um, what else is special about it? It has one axis stabilization. Uh, this uh, front lens here will automatically stabilize going up or down. And also, um, it can be remotely pointed. Right, let me get it in the picture here. This front lens will automatically go up or down. And also, will remote can be remotely pointed up or down via the remote control. Now, this lens does not operate while on the ground. This will only operates when the aircraft is actually flying. So if you're trying to point the lens up or down or see if it see it doing its gyrations, you have to be flying. So <laughs> you can't do that by hand, in other words, or else you'll chop up your fingers <laughs> to demonstrate that lens pointing. But I think I can demonstrate it while I'm flying. I'll just get up close and see if I can jiggle the aircraft to show it moving up and down. Now, in addition to that single axis um, stabilization, this also has the capability of stabilizing your video through the software, the app that's used to view the video. Uh, it's the HFUN Plus app. That has a full three axis, well, yeah, three axis stabilization, but it's done through software using your phone. Now, to use that properly, you are going to need to have a high-end phone, folks. I have a little $100 phone from China. My phone, although I will be able to receive FPV video, if I try to use the auto stabilization system, you'll notice with the older phones or the lower capability phones, a lot of lag. We're talking 10, 15, 20 seconds of lag on your video if you turn on the stabilization. That stabilization, again, is done through the um, your phone's processor, the processor of your phone. Not This doesn't have a processor on board for doing that uh, uh, editing, you know, uh, stabilization editing. It's done through your phone using the HFUN and Plus app while you're flying. Okay, you can't do a post-processing after you land. Unfortunately, you have to be doing it while it's recording. And again, that creates a ton of lag. So um, if you want to use that feature, again, I recommend using a higher-end phone to use that feature. Otherwise, you're going to be um, disappointed again okay with the uh the way it performs now um this does have gps and it also has optical flow okay so um this will automatically maintain its position and also can automatically fly home let me open it up to show you the, the drone first off uh, to open it you always start with the top i'm sorry this, the top ones come out first the, the ones that go forward and they snap open like so and the bottom ones can then be opened up and push backwards like so okay to show you the, the drone while it's opened up uh, now I mentioned this has GPS okay which means this can automatically fly re and return to home and land at its takeoff point if you lose signal and or if you're on low battery or on command if you just want it to come back you can press the button have it come back and land for you automatically this will do it now in addition to that it also has optical flow sensor 
on the bottom. You can use this for indoor flying. I would not recommend flying this brushless drone indoors, but you, you could use that if needed for indoor flying where GPS reception is poor. Or outdoors if you don't want, if you're having a problem getting the GPS to lock on, this will still hover in place uh, in optical flow mode using its optical sensor. Now this optical sensor, you know, I said this one's a 4K, uh, 2K slash 4K camera, or also 1080p camera. This one here is a 720p camera. But even though it's 720p, its image quality is not too bad. So you can switch between this front camera or this back camera to uh, review and record either one of these. Um, say you want to do a rocket launch or type takeoff, you know, where fly, the drone flies up directly, uh, straight up above you. You can, using this particular camera here. Now, the, notice this camera module. It's a module, and it is removable, although I, I had a... I really can't remove mine. It's in there tightly. But supposedly this is removable. Um, and with that in mind, let me try it one more time. Again, I can't get this open, so I'm not even going to try. But again, this does not have an SD card slot. I've uh, verified that through other reviews <laughs> that I've seen of this that were able to open up this camera, and, and they could not find an SD card slot for this particular camera, which is a, a down, a con for this particular drone. Let's see, what are the things we got to talk about? Let's talk about the battery. This is its battery. I got the two battery version. This is available one, two, or three batteries. Um, depending on your pocketbook, I recommend getting more than one battery. But it's a 7.4 volt, 2800 milliamp per hour battery. One thing about this battery, I had a hard time <laughs> getting this battery to insert the way it came out of the box until I figured out that this little knob on the front of the battery is a protection knob that you need to remove before flying. It slides off like so. So if you're having a problem getting your battery inserted into the drone, slide this off, okay? This is here so that you can transport the aircraft with the battery inserted, but not all the way inserted so that it, it energizes the battery. It's to, it's to protect the battery from uh, being over discharged accidentally, okay? But again, before you, first, before you fly, you need to remove this so that you can insert the battery all the way into the back of the drone like so, and then you got to pull down this tab, and then it goes in all the way. So I know some of you are going to make that mistake because it took me about half an hour before I figured that these things slide off, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so remember that, folks. Um, other things you get in the packet, you get a full instruction manual, you get the software instruction manual, and you get a little card here that will enable you to uh, find uh, tutorial videos on this particular drone from uh, ZLRC. And other things you get in the pack, you get the controller, you get a full spare propellers, you get charging cable for the battery as this battery is charged through a micro USB port right there. So you, you can charge it uh, up to two amps they recommend charging it. If you charge this through your computer, expect a long <laughs> charging time for this 2800 milliamp per hour battery. I recommend using a two or one to two amp charger. Don't go above two amps to charge this to speed up that charge process because if you charge it through your computer, I think that's point uh, five hundred milliamp hour uh, charge. This could take up to six hours. If you want to reduce that charge time, again, use a wall charger, a phone wall charger to reduce that charge time. And let's see, you get the, I mentioned you get a full spare set of props, and these are our uh, full set of uh, screws to screw in those props, and a screwdriver. So that's what you get. Let's go for the controller. The controller is actually, um, it's well labeled for most of the features, except some of them I had to label to uh, figure out what they, so I can remember what they do. But this first button here is your rates button to, to go from beginner to intermediate rate. To, you know, uh, it changes the speed of the drone in effect, so it allows the drone to pitch deeper if you press it with a quick press. Uh, long press, while the drone is on the ground, will initiate the gyro calibration of the drone. Uh, so you, you should do that before every flight, along with a compass calibration, which you act, can activate by pressing this button here and holding it down for five button or five seconds. Quick press this button here. We'll take a photo. Uh, other things this does have. This is your return to home and landing button. You press quick press of that, and the drone will start a return to home and landing. And this is your video taking button. And quick press of that will start and stop the videos. And your on off switch right here. And to arm the motors, you bring both sticks down and inboard like so. 
Let's look what you get on the screen itself. It does have some telemetry showing the uh, distance and height of the quadcopter along with uh, satellites, satellite reception and number of satellites being received. Um, other thing that says mode zero, that means it's not connected to the drone. Mode one is, <coughs> excuse me, the controller is connected to the drone, but you're in optical flow mode. And mode two, if you see it show up here, means that you are in GPS mode. And additionally, you have transmitter battery power and receiver battery power uh, of the drone. This Actually, this would be the drone's battery. And since I'm not connected, it's showing we don't have any battery power for this drone. <laughs> so I haven't turned it on. Um, other things on this controller, these buttons on the back right side are for controlling the front lens to move it up or down. The right side button moves it down and the center button moves it up. And the but two buttons on the left side are for activating headless mode, the inboard one. And the outboard one was is automatic takeoff and automatic landing. This drone can do automatic takeoff and landing. And it is powered by four AA batteries. Let's talk about the app next. It's the HFUN uh, Plus app. And for that, I'm going to actually be using Mobizen to show you the different features of the app. So hold on, folks. One very important thing that I forgot before we go into that app is I forgot to show you. This comes with a nice carrying case. Very nice carrying case indeed. With a strap, a shoulder strap on it uh, for carrying the drone. Um, if you open it up, it has a compartment for the drone itself, a compartment for the controller, and for your accessories. Um, up top here, it has two little net pockets. So, again, not a nice, uh, very nice case that comes with the drone. Okay, I've turned on the drone and connected my phone to its 802.11 AC Wi-Fi signal. And then I opened the, up, the HFUN Plus app available on Google Play and iTunes. And let's go over it. First off, uh, under instructions, if we click on that button here, it does go over the software instructions for this, uh, this app's instructions. And it's actually pretty good uh, detailed instructions for each of the features of this app. So keep that in mind, folks, so that you can see what <laughs> it's in English too. Um, records shows the different flights that you've done. Uh, I've only done a few limited flights here. It shows the flight time and where you did it at. And calibrate, if we press calibrate, that will enable us to do a, first a gyro calibration where you put it on a flat level surface, put the drone, leave it undisturbed on a flat level surface, surface <laughs> and then hit calibrate to calibrate its gyros. And also, if we click it again, uh, we can start, let me go back. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let's go back to calibrate and this is the gyro calibration, which we did. No, it's not the gyro calibration. <laughs> Let me start over again. This is the compass calibration. And if we start the compass calibration, you got to do about two or three turns. Well, let's do it. Just hit calibrate. And it'll blink like that. And you do several turns like so, horizontal, until you hear a beep. Actually, we're not going to hear a beep since we're doing this using the phone. but I think we need to do it until the lights stop. Do it about three times vertical or horizontal and three times vertical until you get solid lights. And that'll tell you that compass calibration is complete. Again, it took about three turns of each. And there we go, compass calibration is complete. Now, if you do this compass calibration with the controller, the controller will beep with each of the, when each of those is completed. So um, you won't make a uh, mistake like I did where I kept on turning. Let's turn that off now. Now let's go over the features. Okay, this is the app itself once, once it's open and ready to go here. And in the upper left corner, we have uh, signal, Wi-Fi signal reception strength. And we've got about four bars there out of five. Um, also, GPS mode, uh, that we're in GPS mode along with the number of GPS satellites that we're receiving. We also have battery power. And we also have telemetry of... Uh, altitude and distance of the quadcopter along with uh, speed, ver vertical and horizontal speed of the quadcopter, along with lat long, which I'm not going to show you right there. I'm going to blank that out. Now we can switch between the front and the next one out there. We can switch between the front camera and the bottom camera by pressing that button there. It shows like a camera and it should look down. Right now it's looking down at the belly, which is kind of dark right now. So we're going to switch back to the top camera, the front camera. And next one is uh, virtual reality mode, which means if you click that, you get a split screen, and that enables you to use this with uh, VR goggles. Um, next thing here is we can rotate the video. I don't, we don't need to rotate it upside down, 
but it will split it upside down. Next one says standard definition and high definition. If we click it, um, you want to be in standard definition for your phone. This is what you're viewing on your phone. You can view 1080p video on your phone, but it's going to create lag if you do so. So I recommend keeping in standard definition, even though it will be recording to your phone in 1080p or whatever that you had selected, uh, 1080p or uh, at, what is it, 2K automatically. But this is what you're viewing on the phone, on the screen on your phone, standard definition or high definition. Uh, next one is uh, your uh, album, your video album of flights that you've done there. And I'm going to click on it right now, and we're going to come out of that. And the next one is to back out, back to the beginning of the app, if you wish. But we're going to hit Start Play again and go through the other features here. Now let's go down to the left side here. We have a camera and a video button. We press that, we'll take a photo, or we press that video camera, it will start and stop the video. But the feature right next to it, MV is music video. Let me hit submit here so I can do that. Also notice that you can zoom in, zoom in and zoom out by pinching on the screen, which is pretty cool too. Now the next one is again music video and it also has other features like white balance. Let's press that and we have different white balance that we can select. For my flight I'm going to go with the first one here. Uh, for today's flight, but also with that notice that we can have split screen three screens four screens six screens and eight screens I don't know why you'd use that, but it does now. There's also one other feature here We can have music make a music video automatically while this is recording by clicking on choose music There we go now. I'm not going to choose well. I'll choose one of these I'm not going to choose that first one because it's Despacito, and I know I'm going to get a YouTube copyright hit if I press that one. But this one here is Chinese, and I think I don't. I think I might get away with it. So, okay. But again, you you can select this by pressing Choose in the bottom right corner of each one of these, and it will automatically play while you're recording your video and record that with the video. So that's kind of a neat feature in itself too. So, uh, and on the right side, we can record, start recording uh, video and uh, photos, but I recommend doing that from the main screen, not from this screen here. Uh, you, it will still automatically do it if you choose, uh, you know, if you want to record that video with that and uh, adjust your white balances, it will do it on this screen also. So, if we go down, we've gone down to picture, and the next one here is, if we click that, we can switch to um, flight mode on your phone. You can control it with the joysticks of your phone, the virtual joysticks of your phone, but I'm going to turn that off. And we can change the rates 50% and 100%, uh, beginner and expert rate. And next one's automatic takeoff, which I'm not going to press because I don't want to hurt myself. But first I need to unlock the motors by pressing the, that lock at the bottom and the motors will start to spin in idle. And again, I'm not going to press that while it's in the house here. <laughs> And let's go to the uh, right side selections. The first one we got here on the right is for choosing um, waypoint flying. And we have two types of waypoint flying. We can draw a uh, line or we can choose different waypoints. And uh, I'm not going to be doing that in the house, but we'll try it when we go flying and out in the field. So I'm going to come out of that. Next one is uh, tracking. Automatic tracking. The first one in, the, in your you have three selections for automatic tracking. Uh, the first one is optical flow, where it's going to be tracking uh, a person, and you have to select it on your screen. Normally, these, these don't work very well with my phone. Again, my phone's an older phone. Sorry about that. My phone's an older phone, and when you use optical tracking with older phones, it can be a little bit iffy whether it works or not. But uh, next one down in the center there is uh, palm control. You can fly... The drone using your palm you put up your palm in front of the uh, drone and if you lift it up higher the drone will climb if you lower it your drone will descend and move it right and left and the drone will just follow your palm and finally on the bottom is gps tracking and that's what i am going to use it's going to track the gps on my phone and normally those work very well and the second one down or the third one down on the right there is circle position uh, orbit position and uh, there's two types of orbit positions if you can turn right or left uh, and um, the one on the right you can select either right or left and then hit submit that's the one in the far right and we'll do such and while it's doing such you can also adjust the height and the um, uh, 
radius of the circle using the control sticks, virtual control sticks of the control of your phone or the controller if you're flying with the controller. And finally on the right there is return to home and landing, an automatic return to home and landing. We can click that and the drone will fly back and return to home and landing. Good morning Quadcopter 101 here on a beautiful day out here in the desert with the uh, ZLRC uh, SG906 Beast. Okay to start this up we need to first turn on the controller and put the controller on the ground and also open up the quadcopter's arms back first or actually the front arms first come from the back and the back arms go out like so and to turn on the drone quick press and then the long press of this button here on the battery quick press then long press until, until we hear that and you hear the double beeps and that tells you that it is connected to the controller and uh, first thing we are going to need to do it goes into compass calibration mode on its own so uh, actually no I think I need to activate it it's looking for satellites right now but for compass or we do the gyro calibration first which is this button on the left and let's press it quick and that should calibrate the gyros actually you got to do a long press long press there and then I get the rapid flashing and then stop to tell me that uh, gyros have been calibrated and I'm going to go back to beginner right there who is what I did when I clicked that now let's do the compass calibration long press on this right button okay now they're blinking intermittently that tells us we need to do horizontal rotations till we hear the beep and then we do vertical rotations till we hear another beep with the nose down Okay, we are calibrated. We got solid lights again on the back, red lights, and now it needs to look for satellites. And while it's doing that, I am going to connect my uh, phone to the drone's uh, to the drone's Wi-Fi signal. So hold on, folks. Okay, this is the H Fun Plus app available on Google Play and iTunes. Uh, we have 13 satellites on my LCD screen here, uh, so that tells us we are ready to fly. Actually, so let's hit Start Play on the app and. Keep three meters away between you and the drone. I'm going to do that, get a little bit away. Then I hit submit. And uh, it tells us we can zoom in and zoom out on this screen here by pinching the screen. As you can see there, we can do such if you wish to do that. But what I'm going to do now is start video recording by pressing the video recording. Oh, that was the camera button. I just took a photo, folks. <laughs> uh, let's start the video recording like so. And right now I do not have a uh, compass or uh, what do you call it? Um, stabilization turn on, so I shouldn't see much lag. So arming the motors and giving a throttle. And yeah, no lag. <laughs> okay, let's check that stability before we fly or before we send it up on. Always do this with a GPS drone. You're looking to see if this thing is going to rotate um, in like a toilet bowl going down a toilet. Uh, if you don't see that, you're good. If you do see that, you need to land and redo the compass calibration. Let me get into the picture here. Picture and say, how do you like my shirt today, folks? <laughs> okay. Syncing up the camera of this. Uh, we are recording. And let's see, I want to raise that camera. And to do that, i got to press the one on the right. Just raise it up some. There, I want to see the horizon. And we are seeing the horizon. And uh, let's set it up on and see how far we can go with it. Pushing forward. Heading out into the desert. See what kind of range we can get. 30 meters, about 100 meters I'm going to put on my glasses here. So I can see it. Going up higher, higher, higher while we're climbing. And going up on at the same time. I want to keep it above the mountains in the distance on the horizon there so I can see it. And stopping it there at about 100 meters. So I can put my glasses on and let it just hover there. While it's there, let's go up a bit higher. And while it's going up, I am going to rotate. Rotate the drone. Let's give it some rotation. Showing the area. As it's climbing, keep rotating, rotating to the right, 
Okay, stopping rotation, stopping the climb, and pushing forward and heading back toward the mountains. Let's see what type of range we can get. We are how high? I'm trying to look at the altitude. Oh, 45 meters and 154 meters out. Heading out by more. No, I generally don't go up like 100 meters in that because uh, you lose, when you go up too high, you're losing uh, resolution of things on the ground. You know, uh, you're not seeing the ground very well when you're too high. I like to see the details of the ground. Okay, we're stopping right about there because I lost Wi-Fi signal temporarily here. Uh, how far are we at? 278 meters. Not bad. Okay, with that in mind, let's see if we can rotate back toward us and still maintain that signal and no <laughs> I think I've lost signal so I'm gonna push forward from there uh, let me see here I lost a video signal too for the uh, recording so and the recording has stopped from that point there we're going to do the automatic return to home on this by pressing the return to home button and let's see if it actually comes back we're at close to 300 meters when I lost FPV range. It's coming back. Coming back, I can see it. Wait, let's see how accurate its landing will be on its return to home. By the way, it's a beautiful day in the desert here, about 72 degrees, slightly overcast, so the sun's not too hot. Just a wonderful day here today. Just a very light breeze in my face, just to keep it cool. Okay, here it comes overhead. And yeah, let's see it come down from way up there. This 2800 milliamp per hour battery on this thing should give it plenty of flight time. Okay, directly overhead. How high up again? 45 meters or so, something like that. Yep, 45 meters. Let's see it descend from 45 meters. And by the way, while I'm there, I'm not seeing signal, so I still have not regained signal yet. But it's starting its drop. And we'll follow it down to the landing. Coming down. Anything beneath it that'll hurt it? No. Slow it down for the final part of the descent. So not too bad, not too bad of a return to home. However, I'm looking, the FPV signal has not regained. So if you lose FPV signal for an extended period of time there, folks, um, it might be a while before you regain it here. So I'm going to see, um, put it back on its pad here and see what I need to do to regain the signal here. Uh, so hold on, folks. Okay, to regain the signal, I had to restart the app. Um, it took a while for the Wi-Fi signal to um, reconnect to my phone. I don't, I'm not sure why that was. But before we take off again, this time I want to turn on stabilization. Uh, actually, let me get yeah, hitting settings, and then stabilization on, and this should be on now. And then backing out of that, hitting start play, and hitting submit, and starting the recording of the video again and starting the motors and hitting the automatic takeoff button which is that one there take into the air and right away I noticed I got lag a lot of lag but I wanted to show you the stabilization system um, I still haven't taken it off on my screen yet but we're gonna go forward and just show you how the stabilization system works we're not gonna fly very long or very far but I just want to fly it to show you how it stabilizes Okay, turning to the left, we're just going to do a circle around the area and then stop the recording afterwards. Let's circle that way and then let's turn to the right this time. Do a figure eight over the area to show the stabilization system in, a, in work. Now again, <laughs> it is very slow uh, on my phone because my phone is an older it's an older phone, folks, about two years old. 
and not the best. It's still available for sale today. It does have 5G, that's why I use it. And yeah, bringing the drone down. And around for a final landing. And then we'll stop the recording. See if I can land this on the pad manually. Yes, I can. Okay, and I'm noticing, here, let me stop the motors by pulling down. Maybe I gotta hit this arm. There we go, <laughs> you gotta do it again. But I'm still flying on my screen here. Okay, it's coming back. And we're gonna, I gotta keep uh, this running here because if I stop recording now, I'll lose the video, okay? You have to wait until the recording or you know the sequence that you were recording completes on your screen before stopping the video. You know, again, it is uh, stabilizing using digital image stabilization through my phone. My phone's doing the computations for this, uh, but you have to wait until it's completed before stopping that video or else you will lose it. So we're going da, 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 da. <laughs> still flying on my screen, but editing that video. Waiting, waiting. Now, with the image stabilization, you get a much uh, stabler video, but you also get those black bars that show up on the edges here, where uh, if the drone uh, jerks too much in the air, the image stabilization can't uh, correct for that, and you get a black bar. And the way it does it is this 1080p video is being, uh, it's just looking at 720p resolution, and the outer parts of the screen are uh, being hidden while it, stabilizes the central portion of the video and it's still flying so i'm still talking to keep you folks entertained <laughs> until this thing lands see it's i'm going to include this uh screen recording that i'm recording with mob is in to show you this but afterwards i'll sh you know to show you the delay that you get while using this uh stabilization but let it finish its part of the flight. It's about ready to come in for a landing on my screen. <laughs> that was only a two-minute flight, wasn't it? Three-minute flight. But it takes a good ten minutes or so to do the image stabilization and complete it. There it is coming for its final landing. And almost, almost, almost. And I think that's good enough. We're going to stop it right there, folks. You don't need to see my shoes. So hitting stop on the video and saving it. Stop. Okay, we should be good to go here. Uh, this time, though, I'm going to go back out again and uh, go into settings and turn off that stabilization. Okay, stabilization is off. And hitting setup complete it. And let's start play again. And, uh, okay, hitting submit. And this time I want to try the advanced features of this drone, namely the follow me and circle me and that. We'll start with follow me first. So starting the motors, taking the air by giving it throttle this time. Checking stability. Stability is good. Getting into the picture. And let's lower that camera. How low can it go? Right about there. And let's do it up and away backwards. <laughs> that thing has a lot of power. Okay, coming back down again. I just tried a little trick there, up and away backwards, but it didn't didn't seem to work very well. Also known as a crane shot. <laughs> And we'll plop it right about there and raise up the camera again. Going back up. Okay, the next thing we want to try, follow me. Now this video, starting the video recording. Video is recording. And that is now follow me. That's waypoints, follow me. And we're going to do phone follow me first, where it's following the GPS of my phone. I hit that, it backs off to about, well, I don't know, I'd say about, uh, five meters away 
and let's see if it'll follow. And I'm still seeing some lag here on my screen. I don't know if it's uh, be because I used that follow or the stabilization feature or not, but it's not. It's about three second lag I'm seeing. So it's not too bad, but follow me is working by the way, as you can see here. Let's see if it'll follow me over here. I'm just doing the follow me. Follow, 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 follow me. Follow the tide, I follow the tide, I follow the tide again. Okay, we're that's enough of follow me. Follow me's working. Uh, I'm gonna come out of that. And we're gonna go into follow me again and see if we can get the optical one to work. But first it's gotta complete it. Where's it pointing? Point it toward me. Is that toward me? I think it's toward me. Now there's a lot of lag right now. I'm gonna stop the video real recording real quick and go back into my settings and see what the issue is here. I wanna make sure that uh, I did turn off stabilization. Clicking again. And I wanna make 4K correction off also. If that was on, I don't know if it was or not. Hitting setup complete. Hitting start play again. And hitting submit. And there I am. And let's try again the optical follow me. And that's the top one, folks. Not optical mode, unable to turn off visual. Okay, I guess you can't do that in GPS mode. You can't use this optical follow me. Uh, and I'm not sure how to turn off the GPS with this. <laughs> I'm looking at the back here, take off land. I did not see a button where you could turn off the GPS and switch to that optical flow sensor. But with that in mind, it does have that optical flow sensor and I want to switch cameras. And we're going to press this button here. So to look down and I'm going to hit recording and get under it. I don't know if it's safe or not, <laughs> but I'm directly under it and doing a rocket. <laughs> going up and away with the rocket mode using its bottom camera. That's its bottom camera, folks. Um, it records at 720p, but it's not too shabby. Okay. Let's switch back to the front camera. Switching cameras. Oh, you can't switch lenses when recording, so I gotta turn off the recording. And then I can, I can switch to the front camera again. Front camera. And hitting recording again. And pushing forward and coming down. Reducing throttle. This thing flies a long time, as you can see here. So I'm gonna fly over the desert as I'm coming down. Descending, descending, reducing throttle, reducing throttle, turning to the left. Okay, I'm bringing it back over again so we can try the other features. And plopping it there and reducing throttle. Okay, getting into the picture again. Lots of lag here still. <laughs> still a lot of lag. Uh, but let's stop that recording. Well, Let's sync this up to remove the lag of my actual video recording. And stopping video, starting video, and let's select, uh, again, the, let's try the palm control. And palm control, you've got to be in optical flow also to use it. Let's try waypoints. Waypoint. And draw. Draw. I never can get waypoints to work on these toy drones. I don't know why. What? Okay, non-fixed mode, no trajectory flight. I don't know what that means. But again, trying again. Can't get waypoints to work either, folks. So let's come out of waypoints. Go back to the screen. Let's try circle me, circle position. That's got to work, I hope. Circle position. You got to select clockwise or counterclockwise. I think I selected clockwise. Hit submit. And let's see if circle position works. It was over there. It came over here. Is it going to turn and face the other way? Yep. So you fly it over the top of what you want it to circle. You can use that uh, uh, bottom camera to do such. And then it will do a circle about that position. 
And I believe you can adjust the radius of the circle. I think you can adjust the radius of the circle by pulling out on the stick. Let me see if that's, that's true. No, pushing forward on the stick moves it out and increases the radius of the circle. But it doesn't increase the speed of the rotation. Let's see if I can uh, adjust that by right or left movement. Oh yeah, there you go. You can adjust the speed of the rotation and also you can adjust the altitude of uh, the drone as it's rotating by giving it yaw. I'm, give, I'm giving it left yaw here on my stick, but that increases the rotation speed of the drone. So you can do a rapid rotation also. Let's go out a little further. Well, that's higher. Let's go up higher and, and pushing forward to go out a little further for this rotation. How big of a circle can we make? Well, I think that's about it. <laughs> you can't go any further than that, which is, it looks like about 10 meters. Let me see, see if I can bring it in closer and pick up that speed of that rotation again. So that's about the max limit right there that it'll do, which is not bad. Okay, so Circle Me works on this, and it works well. So let's stop the Circle Me, and how much battery power? It says 7.2 volts. That's a lot of voltage. So with this, okay, I'm going to stop the video and start it again. And this time, let's turn and go out by and we'll go see if I can go to the uh, crossroads off in the distance here which are about 300 meters away and turning to the right whoops hold on folks one of my control knobs came off that's one thing about this these control knobs are kind of loose in this thing and the reason being they want to still looks like it's being uh, it's still doing circle me But I don't know. We're gonna. It's lots of lag. I think it's still doing um, the. What do you call it? Um, stabilization. Because there's a lot of lag on my screen. It's still showing that I'm flying circle me. Now it's going up on. So I should be about over the position of the uh, crossroads right there. It's, uh oh, low battery. I'm doing a low battery return to home. This should bring it back to within 20 meters of my position, folks. Uh, on low battery, when you get a, fir a, low, a first warning at uh, 7.1 volts. That's still a lot of battery power, 7.1 volts on this. You can go down to 6 volts, actually, but on a LiPo battery. But uh, 7.1 volts, it's going to bring it back within 20 meters of your position. And then you can fly the remaining part of the battery close in with that within 20 meters and that's what it's doing right now coming overhead and we're back within 20 meters so we're going to reduce see if we can regain control of the drone no seems to want to do a return to home landing so we'll let it do that and see if i can terminate that part after it lands uh, still recording. Uh, <laughs> the recording still shows me out at the crossroads. Now it's doing it's on my screen. It's showing a return to home and landing. Come on down here. There we go. I got control again. So I got control, bringing it down for, and we'll finish off the last part of the flight here at uh, within 20 meters range. I haven't showed you uh, photos from this yet. Let's see if I can get, take a photo or two. We'll plop it right there. And actually, I want to land it right there because I want to save the battery power for photos. But also, I want, it, want this video to complete recording here. It seems to still be recording. And again, remember, this does not have an SD card. And without that SD card, um, you have to depend on uh, the video completing on your phone before stopping the recording. And again, on my phone, it's showing that we're still in the air because I think it is doing stabilization even though I turned it off. So let's put this back on the pad while it completes its flight. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the recording right there because we don't need to see the landing. So hitting stop on recording. And I will let it complete its recording and then I'll, we'll get back to you then. Hold on, folks. 
Okay, for this final one here, I just want to take some photos. We're going to go into the air here and giving a throttle. And let's try a photo button first. I want to see if the photo button works, but the video button did not. But let's see if it takes it. Yeah, I think I took a picture. I think I took a picture. <laughs> okay, and uh, let's try another using the, the photo button on the phone. Oh, that one worked well. <laughs> and one more using the phone. So, hopefully those took. So, uh, for the final part of this flight, let's hit record again. And let me show you that you cannot go greater than 20 meters right now. It will hit a wall in the sky. Watch. Push a gut, push a gut, and there it goes. See? That stopped it right there. You can't fly greater than 20 meters right now. This is a geofence correction. Watch. It'll stop itself. Going fast forward, and there. That's 20 meters from the takeoff point. Let's go the other way. Go right overhead. And at 20 meters, it should stop, which would be right about there. So, again, you can't, you can still fly it, but for the last part of the battery, until it gets down to about uh, below 7 volts, once it reaches below 7 volts, it's going to do a return to home and landing, and I'll show you that. Once it, once it hits 6.9 volts, we're going to go over here to 20 meters away. 20 meters away is right about here. This is geofence. So I say, give me my final thoughts here before it takes off and lands. Um, there it goes. <laughs> so there's its final, final return to home, folks, on low battery. Um, again, it brings itself in within 20 meters, and then uh, you can fly it around within 20 meters. But once it goes below 7 volts, it does a return to home. Once it goes to 6.9 volts, it will do a return to home and land at its pad. So overall, my thoughts on this. Uh, it is working. The features, uh, the drone depends a lot on the speed of your phone, you know, the uh, processing speed of your phone. I want to go a little bit far forward because it wants to land in this bush here and I don't want it to do that. I want it to land on the pad. So a lot of the optical features, particularly optical follow me and uh, yeah, mainly optical follow me and the stabilization depends on using your phone for the processing power so uh, if you have an older phone expect to see a lot of lag and but if you don't fly mainly if you're <laughs> if you're able to fly line of sight that's not a big issue because let me turn this off too, to stop the be annoying beeping that's my phone beeping it's the app no, that, no that, was the, that was the controller. That was the controller. So, let me stop also the recording of... If it was recording. Yeah, it was. Okay, I stopped the screen recording too. So, all in all, let's give a lot of final thoughts on this. Good flying drone. Good looking drone. Comparable to the look of the Mavic, but it is not a Mavic. does not have all those advanced features. But uh, the features that it does have, follow me works, circle me works, waypoints probably would work if I could find the center position where, where it is on the map. Uh, the center position button on the, the map screen did not uh, position itself, did not work. So I don't know why that is. So the waypoints are iffy, but follow me, circle me worked. Uh, the optical follow me does not, did not seem to work. It's probably because of my camera being too slow. Uh, and again, the uh, auto stabilization of this does work, but if you got an older phone, keep in mind you're going to see a lot of lag on your screen while it's doing that uh, processing to stabilize the video. So, hope you enjoyed this flight, this Quadcopter 101, again with the ZLRC SG906 Beast. Sighting out. Hi, Quadcopter 101 here again. Hey, if you want to get your own shout out in one of my future videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's real simple. Just go to my channel page and click on that subscribe. And also make sure to click that bell button right next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I release a brand new video immediately and give you a chance to get that first shout out. So give it a try, folks.